views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Open 2.0. I'm your host, Charlotte. On this edition of Open 2.0, we'll be discussing College Now with college students Jose Perez, Hadia Tujalo, and Emily Rosa, along with their professor Eileen Markey. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having, Thank you for having us. <laughs> so, Jose, what is College Now about? So, College Now, it gives high school students the opportunity to earn college credits while still in high school. And this program introduces students like me who are still in high school to the transition from graduation to college which can which is understated um, and it just helps us earn credits and get used to college why Emily why should high school students start college now versus waiting until college I think it's important to start college now early in high school instead of waiting to college because like Jose said you get the credits and it saves money in college because you already took the class well if you pass and also um, some kids go into college not knowing what to do what they want to do and I feel like this creates a path and it helps you decide if you want to take whatever you took or if you want to shift your major to something else. How do you do? How long is this program is for? This program is a five-week course. We started um, August, I mean July 9th, and our last day is tomorrow, July 9th. So, so, sorry. So, College Now is a program that's available on every CUNY campus in the city, on all 18 campuses. Um, it serves over 20,000 high school students throughout the city, uh, public high school students from all over New York. And here at Lehman, we provide college classes for more than 1,700 kids during the during the year. So a lot of the classes are after school during the fall semester and during the spring semester. That's you know close to 2,000 Bronx High School students coming to the Lehman campus to learn what it's like to be in college. And then in the summer, we run this five-week intensive program. There's a, a science and math track. Um, and then what I'm part of is the Summer Arts Academy at Lehman College. And so students came, like uh, Hadia Tu said, for these five weeks learning theater, digital imaging, digital storytelling, dance, or in, in this, these students' case, they learn journalism for the five weeks. So basically, anyone from New York State can come here and get credits for college anywhere? For New York City students, New York City high school students, and if they successfully complete these college classes, they, they leave with three or four college credits under their belt, which means when they begin college, either at CUNY or SUNY or even at private colleges, they arrive already with a few credits. And as Jose was saying, they also arrive with a familiarity with the expectations um, that they're going to be held to when they get to college class. So there's a lot more independence, right? The teachers hold your hands a lot less. Um, there's generally much more reading required every night than there would be in a high school class. Um, and so students get this sort of like a taste for what it means to be an independent student and be more responsible for your own work. Hopefully meaning that they work out some of those kinks now so when they begin um, college in a year, they kind of can hit the ground running. So what topics have you guys covered over your courses in this college now? Um, so in class, we read this book called The Elements of Journalism. We read that um, it's, it has 10 fundamentals, like the main purposes of journalism. And the main purpose of journalism is to serve the citizens the truth. And we, let, we read different parts of it, like how not to be biased when you're a journalist and how your whole purpose is to give the, the citizens what is going on and let them form their own opinions of what they want. And uh, in class, I mean, as in the five weeks, we formed a report is called, uh, on the housing crisis. And uh, I, I focused on right to counsel NYC. So before tenants, um, the landlords would take them to um, housing court. The landlords were rich, so obviously they could afford a lawyer. 
but the tenants themselves, they were low income and they couldn't afford a lawyer. So m majority of the time, the landlords ended up winning and the tenants would leave the apartment and they'll go to shelters or become homeless. And now this new law allows them to have full representation if they have low income. And by 2022, the law will be fully implemented. So they will cover every borough. Right now, they're covering 10457, 10467, and 10468 because those neighborhoods in the Bronx are the worst right now. So they need all the attention. But by the five years, they'll cover all the zip codes and everyone. So what was the most impactful thing for you? The most impactful thing because um, is I... Um, I live in the Bronx, so I live in these apartments, but I never knew this was a problem. As, but, like My building specifically didn't have this problem, but buildings around me did. And it opened my eyes because as I was writing this report, I was learning more about it. So I was educating myself and also letting people know. And like majority of the people don't know like their tenant rights. Like You live in an apartment, but you don't know your rights. So it, it raised awareness and it allowed me to explore like talk to other people even though it was really hard to get in contact with majority of them but it allowed me to step out my comfort zone and try new things and learn more about it how long did it take you to complete those pieces so we had five weeks to do it um, you want to answer <laughs> can you read the question <laughs> how long did it take for you to complete those pieces well d during this summer starting july 9th ending august 9th tomorrow um we completed this work. It's so important. It's a magazine on the housing crisis in the Bronx. And over those five weeks, we've been reporting, investigating, finding things to talk about, talking to people, and just um, trying to educate the public on what exactly is going on in these apartments where we live. Was it difficult for you to um, interview the people who live in those housing apartments? Um, in terms of the difficulty, for me, it wasn't as difficult as it may have been for other students in the class because I wrote a piece on an 80-year-old man who previously went to, came to our class to discuss what was going on in his building. So he was already open for conversation. All I had to do was call him, schedule an appointment, and talk to him. But other people might have, like Emily, she had to go and actually hustle for her. Yeah, for me, it was more difficult because... Um, I was covering Park Ash's buildings, and he's like one of the worst landlords in New York City. And I was um, researching him, and I was looking at all his records, and he's been on like the 100 worst landlords list for like three years. But this year, he wasn't on the list. So then I was like investigating why he wasn't on the list, and I had to go to his buildings, knock on his tenants' doors, and a lot of them didn't want to speak. They were scared. They rejected me. So it was a difficult process. Well, we have to take a quick break. But stay tuned for more Open 2.0. We are neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Welcome back to Open 2.0. We continue with our College Now guests. For topics that you covered in the class that you did not receive answers on, will you personally continue to find answers? Idea two? Um, coming into this classroom, like I had no, I came to this journalism class to kind of find like my career path, what I wanted to do. I've heard of journalism before, but I never looked into it. Like it's just, when somebody asked me what I wanted to do, I just said journalism or psychology. But now, since we had many guest speakers come and they focus on like immigration, like two of them, um, Daniela Marquis and uh, David Gonzalez, they focused on immigration a lot. And uh, like yesterday when we had David Gonzalez, I. I had this like idea like I want to be a TV host to talk about a lot of different issues because I'm a person that likes to talk a lot and I like to talk about political issues that's going on and I can relate to like immigration like a lot of things as a young Muslim student is like I want to talk about a lot so I will pursue this and continue looking. Of the group which one of you are interested in journalism and what kind of jur journalism would you be interested in Jose? Well me personally I'm not that interested in going into journalism specifically, but I am trying to get into political science. I'm trying to take that as a major in college. And this taking this journalism class has helped me 
has exposed me to local events and things that I didn't really know about the Bronx. One of the goals in teaching the class is not necessarily to recruit people for careers in journalism. If, if people are interested in that, that's fantastic, and we have a great program here at Lehman where they could pursue that as a major. Um, but I'm also, among the goals is really to teach civics and citizenship, and by which I mean participation in the society. It doesn't have anything to do with one's immigration status. Um, but my hope is that students learn to be active participants in the society um, and to understand how the levers of democracy work and how when you have more information and more awareness, you're much more powerful. So I think of the teaching the journalism class as really providing the students with a sense of empowerment and sort of like the, um, you know, this superpower to be able to understand the world around them and therefore to be able to shape the world around them and to be able to be, be engaged in the conversations that determine how our lives are lived here in the Bronx. Is there field work and research involved? If so, how much, Emily? Um, there was a lot of research involved, but most of it was like provided for us. We just had to like go into it and dig up the information that we needed for our articles. Like for example, we use that map, and it's like a virtual map, and then you put in your address or like any address, and you can find the building's violations code, like there's a link and it sends you to the HPD website, the DOB website, which tells you the building's violations, complaints filed by tenants, which was very helpful for us with the magazine. And we also used um, the public advocates, um, their hundreds worst landlords list, which also helped us with that. There was just like a lot of research to do. And then what Emily did a great job of, and many students as well, is taking the the digitally available information, taking database information, facts, and cut and dry statistics, um, which is invaluable and is something that in a democracy we have access to because we have strong open public records laws in this city and in this state. Um, but then it, the, what the reporter's job is to do is to take that information and then make a full story out of it. So Emily and several of the other students had to go out and you know, like they have the stats on what the housing code violations are. Now they had to go to the apartment and talk to people um, because most knowledge in the world is not online, right? Most knowledge in the world is not written down in a database. It's held in the minds of the people who live here. So they did this, what we as reporters call shoe leather reporting, going out, knocking on doors, talking to people and being able to elevate and explain their stories. Were you interested in the news before? If not, are you now? How do you do? So um, many could relate, like I would see the news a lot on social media, but I never knew, like th they would never really explain the, what happened. So like coming into class every morning, Miss Marquis would let, make us read the New York Times, two to three articles. And uh, after we finish, we dissect the article. We talk about the five W's and the one H, who, what, when, where, why, and how. And uh, we really under, like, the journalists give us the facts, and then at the end, after we finish reading it, we have to form our, like, we form our own ideas. Like, instead of just, like, social media just tells you what happened, and, like, they blame people, but, like, the newspaper doesn't. It just gives you the facts, and you form your own opinion, and uh, we have discussions about the article. Professor Markey, so where can we find your information if we want to join this journalism um, class? So College Now, you can learn more about College Now at Lehman College by going to um, lehman.edu slash college now and then if you're interested in coming to the journalism program at Lehman College um, come and register at Lehman and we have an excellent department of journalism media studies and communications where we do broadcast journalism online print based things as well as an excellent radio program unfortunately that's all the time we have for today I'd like to thank our guests for joining us and the viewer for tuning in for more information, you can follow us on social media at BronxNetTV. Until next time, I'm Charlotte.